everybody and welcome back to the On Tabletop Livestream here at UK Games Expo 2018. Uh, quick reminder, don't forget the Geek & Son raffle is on. Make sure and go across, pick up your raffle ticket and answer the question. I am joined by Adam from Grimlord Games. Have I got it right? It's been you a long day, sir. Just <laughs> okay, fantastic. Uh, what are we having a look at today? What do we have on Tabletop? So today we're looking at Village Attacks, which is our uh, Kickstarter that is just about to start uh, shipping from China. Ooh, um, lovely. So all the backers should have it very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, and what the theme is, is it's a castle defense game. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit of a role reversal. So you guys play as the monsters. Ooh. And you're trying to repel the local village who has had enough of you and has come to finally finish you off. Oh, I um, like this idea. So with this theme, uh, yep. we explored all the different folklores from, uh, from all around the world. Mm -hmm. And in the core game, we included five monsters. I see. So who are our monsters on the tabletop here? Okay, so what we've got here is we've got the Doolahan, which is the Headless Horseman. He's an Irish legend. Uh, of course. Oh, Irish. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you know this one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so here he is here. He is looking fabulous. The sculpt details are absolutely razor sharp. See, this is one thing I love these days is the newer designs that we're seeing being done have just a cleanness to them that you don't mm. get with some of the, the older, more traditional sculpts. Yeah. But again, that's personal preference for me. Yeah, well, we're, um, we really practice. take pride in the art. You know, we go out and find the best artists and sculptors. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and we've also got another Irish legend in the core game. It's the Banshee. Ah, of course. Um, and her miniature is here. Now, I believe you actually featured this one quite a while ago. Did it we? popped up on one of your uh, weekend shows, yeah. Ah, I see. Well, this is our, our lovely Banshee. The legend behind this thing used to terrify me when I was a kid. Uh, there was actually an old movie, I'm not sure if you've ever seen it, it's called Darby O'Gill and the Little People. There was a banshee in it. Whenever I was a nipper, I was terrified. Absolutely <laughs> terrified. Um, and in here we have a lich. Now he's a more recent legend. He's from uh, sort of more, more recent uh, like Dungeons and Dragons and that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's him. I love the fact that they've got these little coloured base bottomers to actually mark out who is who. That's actually got an interesting mechanic to it. That I'll explain really? In a yeah. Ooh. Okay, I am, I am now intrigued. And then we've obviously got the classic vampire, which was one that had to go in the core game. Yes, yes. You've got the ancient menace going mm. on on the sculpt. I absolutely love what you've done here. Yeah, we wanted to try and give him a sense that he was kind of intelligent, that uh, kind of like that Bram, Bram Stoker look, where mm -hmm. he's uh, maybe someone who was once uh, like aristocracy. Yes, very, very good idea. I and like it. The last one we've got is a succubus. Why not? Of yeah. course, well, why not? <laughs> so we have the succubus here. Uh, now, whenever people open the box, are all of the miniatures built like this, yes? Yes, yeah, so everything comes pre-built, it's ready to play straight out of the box. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And I love the way that you've, you've done an understated succubus. It's mm. very, very nicely done. Yeah, because the, obviously the theme of succubus is sexual, mm. so it was really a thing for us. We wanted to explore the more or higher class version of that rather yeah. than just go down the obvious route. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's subtle, but it's, mm. it's still beautiful. And yeah. that's something I love to see designers do, is actually take a, a concept mm. and actually do their own take on it. Because each of the monsters you've done here is characterful, it doesn't look derivative of what you would initially imagine it to be, mm -hmm. and it just feels so nice to actually have a, a very cool design. Oh, thank general. you. Um, and in the game, uh, you go up against the villagers. Now, it's scenario-based, so there's all different stories. There's some scenarios where the villagers are trying to kidnap a monster and drag yep. it out of the castle. There's scenarios where they're trying to rifle through the ancient libraries, try and find ways to defeat you, and you've got to stop running off of the books. Okay. There's even a scenario called Dinner Time, where you're trying to drag peasants off to the kitchen. <laughs> um, so there's quite a lot of variety in there. Although, uh, have you seen my apartment, the way I cook? I do that once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> well, never have him around then. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you guys want to come uh, to Ireland with us, you're more than welcome. <laughs> Drop up mine. Uh, <laughs> And uh, there's, there's different kinds of villagers that try and assault the castle. So yes. first off, there's peasants. They're rather stupid, but they're quite numerous. Yes. But they're quite weak. Uh, and then we have hunters. Now, these guys have trained specially to, to go after and combat all these monsters. I see. So ooh, the design on this is really, really nice. Yeah, we I uh, love the, the fact that you've got a little crossbow slung across the back here. And just the nice sense of motion that's in the miniature is great. Yeah, well, when we uh, were doing the concept stage, we said very clearly we want hunters to look like they're just a little bit capable. Like they've studied these monsters. Maybe they've actually never fought one, mm. but they're ready for it. Yeah, well, we've got one running here with a, a bow and a, a stake out and ready to just kill a vampire. Well, a stake's a classic thing. You've got of to have course, a stake in a game. Of course. And then this guy? Yeah, this is another hunter as well. So we have ah. three different sculpts in the game for the hunter. I see. I, I like this because what's better than grabbing a hatchet if you need to chop through anything, it's great. And you know, if you need a pistol, why not? 
Why not? Yeah. Um, and then the final level of villager that comes in is the town heroes. Now these guys are particularly powerful. I see. These are people that have come from far and wide because they've heard about your uh, your exploits. So we've got characters like the Grave Digger, who's are particularly one of my favourite sculpts because he's got a massive <laughs> coffin on his back. Oh yes, 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 yes. All of my yes. This is gorgeous. Crisp details, really nice thematic design to him. I am, I am loving this. Yeah, well, it's very we, good. We thought we'd try and think outside the box with the heroes a little rather yeah. than your kind of standard wizards and whatnot. And this is a scald. He's a he's kind of like a battle poet. So he charges <laughs> into battle singing about towers of bravery and inspires everyone else around him. Nice. So I love that you're drawing from so many different sort of backgrounds to actually bring this together. Well, actually, when we were in the design stage, there was too many mythologies. We were looking around yeah. the world, and we could have gone on forever. Yes, um, so we course. decided to focus mainly on European mm. and Eastern European mythologies. Yeah. Um, this is the Executioner. Ah. So he's in a... Oh, in a yes. Oven. He is big and he is brutal. And I'm seeing just a little bit of a, a flavor of Rome just in this uh, the shoulder pad here. Yeah, he's a, he's and, a chunky guy. <laughs> yeah, and the, he's the got, axe looks vicious. He's actually got notches on his axe as well, ah. which signify how many kills he's got. Oh, I see that. I hope you guys can see that at home. That is yeah. a lovely, lovely little detail. It's the hidden details like that in some sculpts that just give it a little bit of story and bring yeah. that character to life on the tabletop whenever you notice it. These are gorgeous miniatures. I would love Thank to you. sell down and paint some of these. Thank you very much. We've had amazing compliments about the miniatures. Even, you know, the peasants, they're, they're sort of the, the lesser characters, but we try to get a lot of character in them as well. So. <laughs> I have had enough of your monster foolishness. I am coming to murder you. <laughs> and we had to get a pitch. Uh, we not only did we have to get a pitchfork, but we had to get a torch in there as well. You've got oh, to have course, torches and pitchforks. Of course. It's, it's, it's an absolute those, necessity. those classic tropes that have to be in there, but they, they work so well, especially just... This looks like a, just a grumpy old man and he's <laughs> screaming, get off my lawn, you monsters. Mm. <laughs> so what I was saying about the colour bases, there's yes. actually a type system in the game. Uh -huh. So each of these dashboards have got a colour to them, and mm -hmm. there's five types of monsters. There's demon, there's cursed, there's arcane, undead, and mythic. And yes. what these types mean is when hunters and town heroes appear, they also have a type. Mm -hmm. And if you come across a hunter or a town hero, it's the same as your type as yours, they yep. do extra damage. Ooh. So they're trained to take out that particular kind of monster. So there's a lot of strategy involved as if you start to get a lot of, say, undead hunters appear here. Mm -hmm. Eventually you might think to yourself, I should stay away from that part of the castle for a while. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, I, I like the readability that that throws onto the tabletop. Mm -hmm. There are some times whenever I'm playing a board game where I get a little bit lost trying to figure out who's what. Mm -hmm. But having that, it just gives me an instant read of going, that's dangerous for me, that's dangerous for me, I need to stay away from there. That's not dangerous to me, let's go hunting for that. Mm. Well, the important part of the design of this game was one, accessibility, and two, speed. We wanted mm. to make it feel like it flowed really well. Yeah. And all the feedback we have when we're playing it at these expos is people say it just flows so quick and, yeah. and really nicely. Um, so it's a dice based system. Mm -hmm. but the game comes with these custom dice. Uh -huh. And when it's a player's turn, they roll these six dice. There's six individual symbols on the dice. I see. You can do melee attacks, you can do ranged attacks, you can defend against incoming attacks in a variety of ways. And you can even do magical things. Um, mm -hmm. Each of the characters, they wear three abilities. And you start the game with just one. Yes. But then as you level up by slaying villages and completing objectives, you can unlock various different abilities that change the way your character behaves. I see. So you get some characters like the dude who's very tanky. So he's very good at disrupting the villages as he charges through the castle, knocking them out. He can take a lot of damage. Whereas you get characters like the Lich, he's much more of a kind of like a glass cannon. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of damage, but he's not got a lot of health at all. So yeah. you have to protect him. And each character's got their own specific role in the game. I see. And playing as the monsters, I'm assuming fully cooperative game? Fully cooperative. Mm -hmm. And there's no player elimination as well. The, the focus of it is in these scenarios is that the castle, the heart of the castle, mm -hmm. has its own health. And yeah. if you're ever slain during the, the, uh, the game, yep. just next round, you just come back to life, but the castle heart takes damage. Ah, so everyone's in it until the end. I see. That's, that's a really nice system. And I, I mm. love games where it's you versus essentially the, the built-in AI of the, the game to yeah. actually try and beat that. It allows you to actually have some great tactical play. It allows you to talk back and forth about tactics during your gaming sessions. Mm -hmm. Lots of fun to be had with that. Yeah, and the, thing, the nice thing with this as well is when we get people playing it, it's a little bit of an adjustment to realise that you're not the focus. The castle heart is the focus. Yeah. That dies, it's game over. And as each villager's charged through, they'll go straight past you. They'll yeah. go straight for the castle. <laughs> so uh, you've really got to keep mindful of that as well. I see, I see. Well, I, I can see some very interesting tactical plays and stuff to mm. be done with this. Um, I'll tell you what, let's actually quickly set up and maybe go through a game round, just to okay. show the, the main mechanics of a game round. So if you want to just quickly reset stuff. I know we reshuffled everything here. <laughs> okay, that's fine. So when you have a game round, it starts off 
Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the monster's face. So each monster yes. rolls these six dice. Okay. So for instance, I'm going to play as the vampire. Okay. And at the moment, the our vampire, let's put him, let's just put him here for argument's mm -hmm. sake and put some villagers in his zone. Yes. So what I do is I roll these six dice, uh -huh. ignore these dice for a minute. And what results I've got here, mm -hmm. these are defense, and then these, that's an attack one. This is a retaliation. So each dashboard mm -hmm. has these three individual slots. It has defense, reserve, yes. and movement. Yeah. I should be able to, I think, show this. Yeah, so you've got the first one, the second one, and the third one. That's yeah? it. And each monster has a slightly different um, placement of these. So the succubus, she has hardly any defense, but she's got very good reserve. Um, and what that means is you can place these two defensive symbols into your defense. Ah. And when it's the village that's attacking, you can choose to defend or even retaliate against various hits. Yes. You can spend any of these dice to move, so you just put one there and you can move one zone. And one zone is just one tile, so I can move yeah. around the castle like this. And some monsters are faster than others as well, so the vampire only has two movement slots, mm -hmm. but then again, the, uh, the branches she has three. Ah, I see. And then for reserve, reserve's really good because you can save dice results for later rounds. Mm -hmm. So you put that there, and on your next turn, you roll one less die, but you've got a guaranteed result. Yeah, yeah. So basically, if I roll like two retaliates in a defense, I'll mm -hmm. put one retaliate, one defense in there and save the other so retaliate. So on for later, yeah, because a lot of these monster abilities require a particular dice result to activate as well. Ah, I so see. you may think to yourself, I don't want to use this ability this round, mm -hmm. but next round I really want to trigger it straight Yeah, there, there's that sort of character hero coming at me. I want to have yeah. that ready for them. Yeah, and there's one uh, result that I didn't actually roll, which is the villager activation result. So this ah. is the only negative result on the dice. Mm -hmm. If you roll this, it moves villagers that are furthest away from the castle heart forward. Oh. And we've got a little bit of uh, luck mitigation here as well. If you ever roll three of the same result, yeah. you can re-roll those dice. That's nice. So, so it uh, balances it out quite nicely as well. Mm -hmm. So for instance, with this round, I could I could spend this melee to, uh, to kill one of the hunters. Damage is automatic, there's yep. no defense or anything, so it's quite smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I could potentially move a, over here. Mm -hmm. And if I put this retaliation in, when it gets onto the villager phase, if they attack me, I'll deal the same amount of damage back. Yeah. So you'll take the damage, but then you deal it back. Mm -hmm. Um, so then that's how my round would work, and then it just goes clockwise. So then these guys would play, and then if you want to have a round of dice and see Yeah, sure, why not? So uh, I'll just go with the succubus. Oh. Okay, so I get a defense. Mm -hmm. I do get so a you don't have to spend results as well, you can just discard them, it's no real good. Mm -hmm. So if you've got this villager activation, for instance, yeah. you'd have to move yeah. the peasant okay. straight What up. are these? So these are ranged attacks. So ah. There's two different kinds of attack. The melee, you deal damage in your zone, mm -hmm. and the range, you deal da damage in an adjacent zone. I but see. you can't spend those to attack in your zone. I see. I so you see. have to think a little bit about where your place is, a lot about where your character's place is. So say she was here, you couldn't use that to slay that particular villager. Yeah, I would have to use this to slay perhaps this one that was coming after the banshee. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah, and, and your ability as well, it has no cost, mm -hmm. but um, it's called seduction. It allows you to, these villager results, you usually have to resolve these in particular zones, but you can resolve them in zones near you. So if you uh -huh. want to lure a villager into a trap or something like that, yeah. you can also do that. And that's another mechanic in the game as well. You can place traps. Oh, I see. So there's loads of different traps that you can actually place around the castle. We've got some spike pits. Yeah, some we've swinging got blades. Some... Oh, uh, yes, we've got classics. treasure hordes and log rams, and nice. all these have... Uh, they can be placed in only certain rooms and they affect certain villages, but they've all got their own special abilities. Like Log Ram, uh, it does a lot of damage, but then any village that survived could eventually move forward I and see. back. So there's a little bit of uh, risk reward in putting those down as well. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else to, to mention for this particular game? Uh, the only one small thing is village events as well. So mm -hmm. in a scenario, it'll tell you when you trigger village events. Yeah. And they can have all different variety of effects as well. Like, for instance, this effect that's out, it's called Misfortune. Yes. And it makes all zones unlucky. And unlucky is a, a status effect that happens in the game mm -hmm. that makes it so that any attacks that are made in that zone, whether it's monsters or villages, you have to flip this first player coin that we have oh. made, which is like a weighty oh. metal coin. And we even had all, all the designs there. are custom that we, uh, we did for it. So there's a little, that makes it, uh, yeah. there's a 50-50 chance of those attacks happening. You can have things like villagers spawn in random parts of the castle, mm. you can have villagers do more damage, so there's, there's always a little bit of a, a factor you don't quite know what's around the corner. I see, you see little touches like this, having an actual metal coin to flip mm. feels so much nicer. Oh, it's a nice feel, yeah. yeah. I've flipped no, that thousands of times now and it is nice. Yeah, well it, it's one of those things I find about some games, some games just have a tactile component. I, mean, I could sit and play the game and just be fiddling with it. Mm. with this the entire game yeah. and not even notice that I'm doing it just because it, it's nice, it's weary, it feels good in the hand. Yeah, well it doubles as the first player marker as well, I so see. it goes down the table so everyone gets a chance to flip the coin when it's their turn as mm -hmm. well. So. Very nice, very, very nice. All right, now I know you guys have another game you're wanting to talk about, yep. but because this one is so big, we're going to need to take a very quick swipe and we'll be right back 
to actually show you the next game. And we are back, and we have reset. That was nice and quick. That was, yeah. Okay, so what mm. is this now? So, <coughs> excuse me, this is our next project. So this is called The Everrain. Mm -hmm. And it is set in a world uh, where it's been raining constantly for five years. Ooh. And the world's basically starting to flood. I see, so that's what we're seeing on our game board here? Is this yes, nice so this is a effect? very early uh, work in progress version of the board. Mm -hmm. um, the, the story is that this old god has woken up and the world's not in the image that it was when he left it. I see. And he wants to drown it again. So. Oh, it's, it's, it's pleasing gods. This is never a good plan. Yes. <laughs> now, the miniature looks beautiful. Um, I actually left it across to here and there. But look at it. This is hefty. Are you going to be making this in resin, PVC? It'll be PVC. So all our miniatures are in PVC, but they're mm -hmm. all really high quality. And I'm guessing, is this a resin master? This is a resin master, yeah. I will be careful of all the pointy bits. <laughs> He I think miniature is a bit gorgeous. of a strange term for it now. <laughs> yeah, so well, it, you see, this yeah. is the thing. I've I've been looking up some model making stuff from like mm. movie studio com companies. They do bigatures, and trust me, they are huge. This yeah. is still miniature. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> very true. Um, yeah, so this is the old god, um, and the theme of the game is it's an exploration game. Mm. So on this board, um, everyone starts off and they get their own ship. So this is the ship sculpt that we've got, ah. and every player controls their own ship, uh, own ship, and their own crew. Right, well, I'll here, no. possibly could have gone a little closer on this. I apologize, everybody. But this is a very nice thing. I love the fact that you've actually designed it that the ship is healing over, mm. and it's not actually just what you would normally see, which is a flat. Well, again, ship. one at the design stage, I said I want to see a ship that's right in the middle of a battle. Yes. And that's what we got. The, the cannons are firing. It's yes. listing right over. Yes. Um, and it just creates like a really nice uh, setting. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, everyone gets control of their own ship and their own crew. I so see. you start off and you hire basic crew, and these are these guys. Ah. These are just your kind of bog standard <laughs> work for anything, guys. Um, ah, the dark scrapings. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. Yeah. Right, so those are these guys here. They are really characterful, and I'm guessing how many of the the crew sculpts are you guys planning to aim for? Um, so there's two in the game at the moment, and they're not repeated too often. They're about sort of six. I see. Six of it. So we're trying to keep it very low for this game. Yeah. But as the game progresses. Um, you can find special crew. So as you explore various towns and inns, you can yes. start to hire different people. You All find right. shipwreck survivors, and that's when you start to get these specialised guys that can really help out. So you get people like this. This is a, a surgeon. Ah. Uh, oh, I love the sculpt on this. Really cool. Have a look at that. So this is our surgeon, and looking absolutely gorgeous. I love again the the nice understated heavy sculpt you went for with mm -hmm. the the different clothing and the different materials. Yeah, it's come across really well on the sculpt. And now that we're Thank a little you. closer, we can have another quick look at our basic crew. So we have our regular guy here. Very, very cool. Shouting and pointing. Look out. There's a rock ahead. <laughs> and we have our other one, which is a guy who appears to actually be pulling down a line, which is a very, very cool pose. And something you don't really see too often is having a miniature where they have something they're interacting with, but that it's actually going up and out of essentially that snapshot of the miniature. Yeah, and that was a little bit of a challenge, but I think the sculptor pulled it off really well. We cut it off at just a nice point. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we have, I mean, there's loads of crew. This is the cook, yeah. and this is a, navig <coughs> a navigator. I have to say, the cook, I respect the mustache. Too. Look <laughs> at this. It is a powerful mustache. That, that, I, <laughs> I mustache this man a question or two. <laughs> Sorry. Very good. That, that was, <laughs> it took that a while, but I want to sink in. Horrible pun on my part. I apologize, everybody. Oh, dear. It was worth it. <laughs> and again, it's oh, the, the sculpt is so characterful because he's, he's just testing the point of that mm. big butcher's knife. Nice. I want to pick a fight with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and ooh, this is gorgeous. What is this? So, this is a navigator. See? So, of all the sculpts, um, we've also got male and female variants in the game as well, just to add a nice bit of variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah, these are the crew. So we also had some crew painted up as well. Um, Ooh, gimme, gimme. So this is the quartermaster. Ah, I see. And then this is the master gunner. Quartermaster looks absolutely fabulous. These miniatures take paint so nicely. Hmm. And this is your master gunner. Oh, yes, I love it. He's just going, hell with this. I'm going to rock about with a cannon. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you could actually call that a hand cannon. It looks as if he has literally just been. I think it's a little bit beyond that. Now, yeah, yeah he, <laughs> he does look like he's a big enough guy that he could just go, no, 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 no. I'm taking this and yeah. off we go. <laughs> yeah, so one of the, uh, the main focuses in the game is about hiring and managing your crew. Yes. So you have to keep them happy because if you don't keep them very happy, they'll mutiny as well. Ah. And all kinds of bad things can happen. I see. Um, this example of the way the map generates. So these are examples of the game tiles. Now, if we bring this a little further in. So map generation you're on about now. What yes. exactly does so, this mean? So 
there's outlines of slots on the board and the game starts off on just one tile. Yes. And then as you sail off of that edge of that tile, you randomly draw from a pile of I tiles. See. Every time you play, the map's completely different. I see. So we have this, this base map to begin with, and then we're exploring mm -hmm. into these. It's a nice thing to have. Yeah. I love games that incorporate exploration. And some of the actual designs and things that you've got put in here look really nice. Oh, yeah. Well, well again, we had the guy who uh, he's done Imperial Assault with Dimensions of Madness. Um, yeah. Oh, he's just so good at game board. Yeah. But there's all different locations you can visit. So these are like calm and rough seas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are shipwrecks. There's islands you can visit. There's towns. That's a storm. Yeah. Um, nice. So there's a lot of writing. These are just a few of the places that you can visit yeah. on the game. This adds to your replay uh, words. It's late. Replayability of your game. Definitely, because yeah, yeah. anytime you're going to play with a randomized board like this, your experience changes every time you play. You might mm -hmm. find your village really early on, be able to hire on some crew, exactly or you might be yeah. left starving for crew and be left with basic guides the entire way through the game until you really have explored everything. Well, each town is unique as well, because there's unique locations you can visit in a town, but each one has a different combination. So some towns will have an inn and a marketplace. Some might not have the marketplace, might have a shipwright. Ah. So as you build the board, you start to realize, okay, this guy over here, he can help me repair my ship. Yeah. And then this one over here is really good for hiring crew, mm. and it, it just creates a really nice organic world. I see. And then is this game coming to Kickstarter or is it? This is going to come to Kickstarter. So really? what we're going to do is we're going to okay. get our current project shipped. So mm -hmm. we've got to get Village Attacks out and yep. Enjoy Stars 1.5. And once they're done, we're going to launch this one. All right. Well, this, this looks absolutely fabulous. I also want to have a look at some of the other monsters you have on the tabletop here. Oh, uh, yes. This so, one has kind of jumped out at me. So he's, uh, he's like a real. So the theme is that when uh, humans start to worship this old god, mm. they slowly start to transform them, ah. ready for this new drowned world. The very early stage is someone like this cultist who's still kind of human, yeah. but he's uh, he's pushing the uh, some definition there. a little bit there. Yeah, and then that goes all the way to the point where you get characters like this, and he's essentially a consciousness of of about a hundred different serpent-like creatures. I see. I love the the big sword that it looks barnacle encrusted and just yeah. rusty as hell. Actually, no, it's not a sword. It's a scythe. Yeah. Apologies. <laughs> It's still got the barnacles. <laughs> yes, yes. No, it was the this particular tentacle arm up here. It made it look like it had a, a front a uh, hand guard yeah. on it. Uh, my apologies, but lovely, lovely idea. And yeah. the, the, the concept that you have to go through to actually look at how would a human be changed? Yeah, actually adapt well, that's it. I mean, there are all different stages of this transformation. So this is uh, our prawn guy. And uh, he's kind of, <laughs> he's okay, right in the middle. Okay, holding him? He's quite spiky. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I can see sort of the, the transformation, the crustacean feel that you're, you're mm. aiming to get through. I'm seeing bits of like shit and stuff beginning to form on like arms and things. Yeah. And it, it's, it's horror. I'm going to give you that. You've got a horror <laughs> sculpt here. Lovely, horrible mm. sculpt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a thank you moment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I'll just show you this last one as well. Oh, this yeah. is the last one we have painted up. So this guy is still, well, He's borderline human. He's got arms. I'm not That's about as close as we get. Uh, this is not borderline human. This has, <laughs> this has went to horror territory right mm. here. If I saw this, I am screaming, I am running, and I am running off the rule of I don't have to be fast, I just have to be faster than you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the paint job that has actually been done on these is really beautiful. I love the transitions and the fades that you're starting to get through your paint job mm. and still maintaining that sort of slimy surface texture that you would have on a creature like this, yeah. or at least you would imagine to have on a, a creature like this. Mm. So when can we expect to see this on Kickstarter? So we're looking towards the end of quarter three, start quarter four, we're going to look up to launch this. But like I said, the priority for us at the moment is getting the other projects done. Mm -hmm. We want to get village tax in people's hands so they can yep. see the quality, yeah. and then they're confident when they come back this one. Perfect. Well, uh, so for both games, you have them both setting out for a look at here at Expo? Uh, yes, we've got village tax set up, and people can come down and play it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got the preview models. We've got more models than this set up for the other end for guys to come and have a look at. All right. Well, uh, this has been a fantastic look at the games you have. Uh, where are you guys lo located in the halls if people want to come and see you? That's a very good question. I don't know the number. <laughs> <laughs> Which hall is it? It's Grimlock Games. We're in Hall 1. Okay. Um, yeah, so you have to get your maps out for that one. All right. Well, uh, everybody, thank you very much for joining us today on the live stream. Please remember, come across, check out the live blog. We will be here for the entire event. We will be live streaming again tomorrow, but this will conclude our broadcast day. It has been an absolute pleasure with you guys. It has been great seeing all the different games today. I have absolutely loved it. We will go on here, everybody, and we will see you bright and early tomorrow.